Wright said the big picture from the last chapter was that there's a role for government to play in increasing what we get out of our scarce resources when marginal benefits to society don't equal marginal benefits to consumers or when marginal costs to society don't equal marginal costs to producers. Chapter 11 extends that idea to another, to two more classes of markets. The things that we, the markets that we have analyzed so far have all been markets for private goods, for things where I enjoy them, and if I enjoy them, you can't. So, a cup of coffee is a good example. If I drink my cup of coffee, you can't also drink my cup of coffee. And, importantly, I can keep you from drinking my cup of coffee. Coffee is a private good. And the market analysis we've done that does a good job of analyzing the market for coffee. But there are a lot of goods that aren't like that. Think about fish in the ocean. It's very difficult to exclude people from fishing the ocean. It's hard to keep people out. And if somebody else catches, catches a fish and eats it, I can't catch that fish and eat it too. Those kinds of problems are called common resource problems. And you've probably heard of something called the tragedy of the commons in your history class. What we're going to do is take a look at how the government can take action in common resource problems to improve what we can get out of those markets. We could also have markets for goods in which it's hard to keep people from but also, we can all enjoy them at the same time. So think about public parks. Public parks are terrific, right? We can all go to a public park and enjoy it at the same time, and it doesn't diminish anyone else's enjoyment of a public park. And it's really pretty hard to keep people out of a park. So those kinds of public goods, hard to exclude people, but, and we can all enjoy them together aren't well distributed using markets, these are the things we most often find provided by governments. And in this chapter, we'll see why. So the last class of goods that we're going to take a look at in this chapter are called natural monopolies. And they're goods in which we can all take part but we could theoretically exclude people. So here we're talking about things like fire protection, where having the fire station in our neighborhood is a benefit to everyone at the same time. And we want to think about how to get enough fire stations in any town in order to make sure we maximize protection from fire stations we'll find that having a single supplier of these kinds of goods, again, these are called natural monopolies, provides a solution to how we can get the most out of the markets for 